Welcome back you here with Goldberg. Today I'm going to be doing a request, and that is to discuss what is a MGTOW exactly. I figured the best way to handle this is to point out some indicators of why you're not a MGTOW, and if any of these apply to you, it's not a personal attack. I do think, however, in the interest of clarity, it's worth putting forward because if people say it's whatever you want it to be, then it sort of ceases to exist in any meaningful form. Now, as I've noted from the very beginning when I started talking about this content, people suggested it, I thought it was pretty interesting. I, of course, don't consider myself a MGTOW because I'm still dating, I'm still playing the game, so I'm not going to pretend that I fall into that particular category. However, you can look at certain sources as far as the modern conception is concerned. Robert Bly, of course, and then Harry Brown, who, I think it's Harry Brown, or it's John Brown, uh, who wrote How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. And that's a book that I tried to get the paperback, but I think it's out of print, so it was over $100 on Amazon. But you can find the ebook version uh, for free online, and I, I'll try to uh, link to it. But he was a libertarian activist, and he also wrote about his experience with marriage and uh, divorce and whatnot. Now, MGTOW fundamentally is a libertarian and anarchical point of view. It doesn't mean overthrow the government when we come to uh, anarchical, but rather there are so many expectations, social, emotional, uh, romantic, financial, that are placed upon men by society. And MGTOW is saying, leave me the hell alone. I'm going clear. It's a peaceful declaration of independence from social expectations. It's not about hatred. It's not about uh, being angry. It's simply saying, okay, I recognize that uh, the structure works a certain way, and I'm just going to move in an opposite direction. That is the essence of MGTOW. Unfortunately, especially with the internet, there's been this sort of anyone who wants to be MGTOW can be MGTOW, regardless of how ridiculous the situation would be. Or in many cases, as we've seen, they're essentially charlatans who are just trying to get attention. So with that being said, uh, let's kind of look into some of the details, some of the reasons why you might not be a MGTOW. Um, the first on the list is the fact that you oppose feminism. That doesn't forcibly make you a MGTOW, though, because there are conservatives, there are even women who support or oppose particular variations of feminism. That alone does not make you a MGTOW. Watching wrecked feminist videos or thinking it's funny when some, you know, uh, nutbag feminist gets humiliated does not make you a MGTOW. You might just find that entertaining. Um, nothing wrong with that as content, but that in of itself does not make someone a MGTOW. Now, many of these things we're going to bring up, they might be leading you on the road to becoming a MGTOW, but it's certainly not a, this is an indication of that. All right, and I think there's a lot of confusion, ultimately. Our second point is MGTOW is not a political party as much as many people treat it that way. It's an individual philosophy. Again, as we said, it's not, okay, you're an MRA trying to work and change the system, but rather it's saying, I don't believe the system can ever change, and I'm just going to depart in peace and do my own thing. It's not terribly complicated, but people will try to act like, well, you've got to unify and do X, Y, Z. And like I said, there's plenty of MRAs, and I have respect for them, what they're trying to accomplish. But fundamentally, a man going his own way is saying, the system is not working, and it's very likely never going to work. So that's the other element. Uh, third on the list... If you have young children that still need to be raised, now there are some cases where the guy doesn't have custody, I understand that, but if you are still co-parenting, or hell, if you're married, I've heard people say, married men can be MGTOW too. No, you can't. You're in a legal contract with a woman. You either have to hope it turns out good till death does you part, or you're going to end up divorced. Not hating anything towards you, but you are not a MGTOW. If you still have to raise young children, you're not really a MGTOW. Can you honestly say you're walking away from the system when you're still raising your own kids and co-parenting with your ex-wife? 
Uh, of course, if you're a single dad, to a certain degree it would make sense, but that just strikes me as where it's like just expanding the fold without any purpose, and I don't see that fitting in as far as the definition would go. Um, the next one is going to be the folks who think that, well, yes, XYZ is true about female nature, but this group insert is different. So it's like, yeah, lol, but Asian women. Um, well, you know, don't date ghetto black women, but as long as you've got a white queen, you're good. It's fine. You want to go off and get married because you think that's going to be successful? I wish you all the best. You're not a MGTOW, though. If you think that somehow female nature is not universal and you can find an alternative here or there, I take it from me, you don't have to, but I've dated girls of most every race and background, with the exception of maybe like Eskimos or Tamils, something like that. Even if they come from a conservative religious culture, they still act very much similar to the liberal chicks. So you cannot, you know, kind of come down and have this idea of it's all about, uh, you know, them being raised this particular way. They're still going to act like women act. And if you deal with that, that's good. But that you're not a MGTOW if you're still thinking that you can find this unicorn of a different origin that's going to not give you some of the same problems. Now, of course, there's going to be degrees, but and if you're still going in that direction, you're not a MGTOW. Um, number five. MGTOW is not about a rage fest. Now, there is righteous anger. Society might have lied to you. Maybe it led you down a path to where you lost money or you had a lot of emotional abuse inflicted upon yourself. That's legitimate, but a guy who's gone his own way is not going to nurse that anger in perpetuity. And it's especially bizarre when you have young guys, and I think it's because they follow these older dudes who are angry maybe with some justification, and then the young dudes start getting really angry and over-the-top and bitter, and it's like, if you are on your way, or you have already gone your own way, that anger is going to be laid aside in place something better. You cannot say, well, this is a healthy way, it's, it's a bettering men's situation, when you're still stuck with, uh, with all that, that hang-up. And again, it's going to depend on the person's situation, but like I said, holding on to anger forever, you are not going your own way. Uh, a lot of these guys kind of strike me. What was that song? It's like, we're breaking free, we're soaring. And then all of a sudden they're back to, you know, rage posting or whatever. You know, the world's unfair. The world is extremely screwed up, especially when it comes to human interactions and dating. But if you want to go your own way, that's got to be about peace. It's got to be about finding some kind of sanctuary with yourself as opposed to fixating on you know everything that has gone wrong because you're not going to be happy you're not going to enjoy life if you're dedicated to all that anger at least not over a long period of time and some of the guys you see it's clear they've been angry for much longer than just a few years the older dudes in particular it's just i don't think that's a good influence on younger men and I'm just going to put that out there. I hope those guys find peace, by the way. I'm not attacking them here either. But I don't think it's very productive, ultimately. Um, our next thing is, if you engage in a lot of finger-wagging towards women, you're probably not a MGTOW. By that I mean, and I did this video some time back, where I was talking about how all these women were starting to name drop MGTOW on YouTube. And I said the real fault is the men, especially the Manosphere men, who are simping and cucking in their comment sections. There was even a guy who claimed to be MGTOW and was simping for a transgender in one video. And I said, if you stop giving them attention, of course women always want attention from men, that's their, their nature, then they're not going to have as much of a following. And these guys are like, yeah, amen, brother, keep preaching. And then you have the next video that comes out with, like, Lana Brinkley or Georgia Free or Turtleneck Girl. And they're all, again, same guys, even, you know, MGTOW channels in the comment section simping and trying to say, well, 
but you need to get married and do this. I'm thinking, why would you be telling her to get married? If you understand female nature and you believe that it's going to end in divorce, why would you be sentencing another man to that fate? It's because these guys are not really MGTOW. These are essentially, you know, curmudgeon Edmund Burke conservatives who want to see a counter-revolution of sorts. They want to see a change. This is just like when you have the traditionalist guys, and they'll say they're MGTOW, and they're like, well, I can take my, my own femininity and energy, and I can apply it to women so that they, they are become f feminine once more. And it's like, <laughs> if you have to go to that point, that's fundamentally blue-pilled. That's showing how, how desperate and pathetic you are if you think that you have to lecture women on how to behave. And actually, believe it or not, one of these um, feminine traditional YouTuber types, a female, she actually told me this. I thought this was quite poignant. She said, a woman will be feminine traditional for any man she finds attractive and high value. Like, you think if you take one of these liberal chicks, you know, foaming at the mouth, and you give her a shot with like a Leonardo DiCaprio or some NBA star, you think that she's not going to be extremely uh, serv uh, servant-minded and submissive and feminine, at least until she gets married, and then after that it might change. But the point is that it is totally naive to think that you are going to somehow, through lessons and influence, you're going to tell a woman how to behave, and that's going to influence how she how she acts that's going to eliminate her nature it's just totally ridiculous and laughable um, our next point is this if you are into PUA which I guess is sort of well no I'm not going to say it applies to me because PUA is a lot of garbage but if you are into the pickup artists seduction artists dating coach stuff you're not a MGTOW all right we've already explained that PUA is really just an extension of feminism because you know, feminists say, okay, we have these ridiculous standards. The PUA say, okay, let's create a new ground zero of men. Let's ruin the dating market even more. All right. It's not teaching women. It's not like correcting or checking women's behavior. It's actually saying, we're just going to amplify how ridiculous and entitled you are. So that doesn't work. And there's a lot, of course, the PUAs who try to claim their MGTOW as well to get more followers. I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, most of them say that going MGTOW is for losers. So why would you care about getting their followers as well? Why? Maybe because they're trying to sell things. <laughs> of course. We come to the next point. The fact that you've been rejected or gotten divorced does not make you a MGTOW. Now, it could, of course, lead you down that path eventually. But, like I say, a young dude who's maybe 15 or 16 and got rejected by a girl, he doesn't really have the basis to be rage-filled and say, okay, I'm going MGTOW because of this. Maybe he wants to, all right. The point that we're making, however, is that not every time, even though female nature is incredibly relevant, not every time does a marriage fail simply because of the woman. And I've brought it up before. I wrote an article about it. These guys I knew who did a lot of MGTOW talking points about how they were victims in their marriages. And then things started coming out later on. You're like, these dudes had severe character flaws. In many respects, they were even abusive in some level. And not necessarily physically, but like you know, mentally, emotionally, verbally abusive. And... You can't discount that because a lot of dudes will lie. Uh, you know, like dudes lie about the cars they drive, the money they make, uh, how many women they've been with, the quality of the women, the size of their endowment. You have to be skeptical when someone tries to claim that they didn't do anything wrong and they were a total victim. You know, it kind of reminds me of in, in the In Betweener show when Jay he gets rejected or his heart gets broken by the girl. And they say, oh, what happened, mate? And he's like, my, my, my cock was too big for her. And it's like, yeah, I've seen, I've known a number of dudes with their marriages who tried to claim this ridiculous crap and actually had very significant flaws that probably contributed, at least in large part, to the end of the union. So with that, you have to, you, you have to look for people who are honest. And usually the extremely angry, bitter people they tend to be kind of uh, 
liberal when it comes to whatever the other person did, and they're very conservative about what their own actions might have been. And in some cases, they've actually been victimized, but I would not say that's as, uh, as consistent as people might believe. And, okay, this is another really important one, second to last. If you traffic in vengeance fantasies, you are probably not a MGTOW. So this is something like, oh, the Muslims are going to put women in burqas one day, or yeah, the economic collapse, the women are going to want us. I heard another one recently on a live stream. I don't know where it originated. It might have been just been a joke, but they were saying, because of corona, women are going to be begging for men. And it's like, okay, don't waste your life on this sort of thing, all right? You can probably imagine there were Native Americans in the, you know, let's say the 1800s who thought, yeah, somewhere in my lifetime, people were going to band back together and teach the Europeans a lesson, or at least within a hundred years. And you're seeing that never really materialized. Hell, even these black people marching, the outcome of the protests will likely be more authoritarian police, more surveillance, more uh, suppression of freedoms. Just because it feels good to think or anticipate does not mean it's going to happen. Too many people, especially who claim to be MGTOW, have this idea that somehow in the future they're going to turn the tables and uh, women are going to be like crying and they're going to, oh, I wish I'd gone with that guy. It's like, let's be real. Even in terms of the whole wall argument, if you are really living as a MGTOW, you're not interacting with women you're not, like, socializing a lot. Unless you're hyper good-looking or you drive a really expensive car, women probably aren't going to know that you exist, whether you're MGTOW or not. That's what people don't understand. They think, like, that women are going to be, like, sleuths trying to find the MGTOWs. It's like, well, at the supermarket, well, this guy, he looks like he might have a lot of money hidden away or something. You're not going to register on their radar unless they're super desperate and, like, there's... You have some major war to where there's a shortage of men. That's not going to be the case. And so I'm saying, if there's a dude, if there are dudes out there, like younger dudes especially, they still want to get laid. That's still on their agenda. You'd be better off just kind of playing the game and dating than pretending that down the road you're going to be more valuable because you might be or you very well might not be. And if you're not cultivating any skills, social, you're not building your wealth. You probably are not, again, you're not even going to be on their radar in 20 years, as harsh as that might sound. Our final point here is, uh, if you're an ethnic nationalist, you're not a MGTOW. If you want to hold that position, that's fine. But that means you should be out reproducing for the black race or the white race, whatever, to preserve your culture, your customs, your traditions, your people. When I hear people who claim that they want to, like, preserve so-and-so ethnic group, but they can't get married or they can't reproduce because they're going to get divorce raped, I'm thinking, isn't that kind of contradictory? People say that Jews are just about their shekels, but these guys who claim they're, they value, like, blood and soil are more concerned about their wallet than preserving their, their people and culture. I'm like, that doesn't figure. So just make a decision which one it's going to be. And, you know, take your pick and act upon it. Because if you really care most of all about your people, the fact that you might get divorce raped at one point shouldn't matter as long as your people survive. At least as I kind of understand it logically. So that's just a list. You know, it's going to upset some people. Again, it's not a personal attack. It's just recognizing actually being a MGTOW is a lot more difficult because it requires you to say, I'm not interested in the culture war. I'm not interested in like the Trump, uh, the Trump versus the Democrats. I'm not interested in feminists versus MRAs. I'm simply trying to find peace and find some you know, some semblance of just a, a a better humanity. And if that's just with yourself or that's just with some friends, that's what you're pursuing. And that's it. It's so difficult to do. It's kind of like uh, you know getting into heaven. They say it's like the the eye of a needle. Very few people can effectively do it because even the ones who claim they're going their own way are obsessed with, yeah, but what is everyone else thinking about me? I have to stop and justify why I'm going my own way, you know, 12 times a day on the internet. 
that probably means that you're not very comfortable with the concept and you need to reassess and say, is this really me?